everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today to have one of our hall stars here. We're talking with Marcus Rosner and uh, we're so excited to have you on the podcast. It's been a while. We haven't had you on since August of 2020. Can you believe it? Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's, that was a while. It was right in the middle of quarantine, different time, yeah. different time in life. Yeah. It was kind of the, the, the peak of uh qu- quarantine really i mean yeah, that's whole everybody, summer uh everybody being so. locked down and yeah don't <laughs> don't miss it yeah right so uh <laughs> how was your 2020 <laughs> and 2021 <laughs> um honestly they were they were fine i mean aside from the whole society coming to an abrupt uh halt um i individually i i progressed my life in various mm-hmm. ways that i'm proud of and uh yeah yeah i don't know you push yeah. on right and so yeah yeah lots of good stuff happened when you had a big wedding that's so exciting congratulations I got married. yeah i got married just uh this past new year's uh mm-hmm. coming into 2022 here and yeah that was that was a big one so yeah yeah we got we got engaged just before the pandemic hit uh, we got engaged the new years of uh, 2020 into 2021 or no wait sorry 19 into 20 mm-hmm. okay of course the pandemic hit um like a few months after that. And Mm -hmm. then, yeah, two years to the day we got, we got married after that. And so we planned, we spent at least one of those years planning the wedding. So so that was, that was one of the things. And yeah, I guess that gave you something to, to, to think about and and plan and, and uh, get your mind off of everything. Yeah. We kept busy. We kept busy. (laughs) busy. (laughs) Uh, Well, that's good. Uh, And if you, you started, back filming pretty quickly though uh after the uh, shutdown right yeah i was uh i was actually producing and starring in a christmas film when it all struck in march of 2020 in my hometown of edmonton Mm -hmm. and um and so we pushed through to the end of march because it took a while for covid to to get to where we were shooting in a significant way so we were able to keep going and then I didn't work again until August. Um, okay. So there was a big, there was a big layoff there. But in that, yeah, I guess right in August 2020, towards the end, I got back on set making a few of these movies. So, mm-hmm. and was that surreal with everybody with the shields on and and all of that kind of thing? Well, after after uh, doing the Christmas film in March of 2020, uh, because everything was sort of happening all at once, and we had to keep going, we implemented these things overnight like we would literally go home one day and then show up the next day and everyone was like okay we all need to wear masks now we all need to be tested like well they didn't even have tests yet Mm -hmm. i guess but we were doing that hand sanity stations were popping up and everybody was socially distancing themselves and that was the first time we'd ever heard of that and so all these little ways that uh that um covid made sets have to be we we basically went through in live time and so by the time i got on another set months later it was sort mm-hmm. of uh, old hat yeah do you think they'll ever get back to doing like live auditions and things like that or you think it's just going to be taped i hope not i <laughs> you like doing I the love, tape i love doing the tapes i i'm always on the road in one place or another traveling and uh, i always felt like it was um it was not advantageous uh, a lifestyle with this career choice because I, I couldn't be in the city and going mm-hmm. into the rooms and doing the auditions. And so now I feel like everyone's doing what I was already doing, which is just putting things on tape and sending yeah. them to casting directors. So, and I, I like that process more because I, I like to um, curate what I think is the best version of myself doing the scene. Yeah. So I would think so. I, I think because you can edit it and, and make it perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Um, so you were in Love Stories in Sunflower Valley with Erin Cahill. She's yeah. big. We're big fans of her on Who the pod. It? And uh, so that must have been a fun time. Yeah, that was great. That was one of the first ones I did back um, after, yeah, I think September of 2020. Uh, we shot that one out in Vancouver. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, Aaron and I had some mutual friends before that. Um, but this was our first time meeting and first time working together. And we got on so well. Um, God, that just reminded me I owe her a text. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she sent me a big, long text and I read it and then it was like, okay, there's a lot here to respond to. And then you do that thing where you forget about it. And uh, Aaron, if you watch this, I'm going to text you back. Don't worry. Marcus Rosner's <laughs> ghosting Aaron Cale. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> um 
So, yeah, uh, that was that was lovely. Yeah. Um, Aaron's a wonderful person, and uh, I got to know her and uh, and her husband a little bit, and their little dog, and yeah. Yeah. Cool. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. Bethany House Publishers and Becky Wade's newest release, Turn to Me. Summer is the perfect time for romance and Becky Wade's contemporary romances always deliver. Her compelling Misty River romance series is set in the picturesque Blue Ridge Mountains and follows the love stories of friends bound by a life-changing event. The perfect combination of intrigue, romance, and wit. This is a series you will not want to put down. Get 40% off and free shipping at bakerbookhouse.com. When you purchase any of the Misty River Romance novels with the promo code MistyRiver40. That's bakerbookhouse.com and code MistyRiver40. You were in a vineyard romance, uh, then, and that was all filmed, obviously, on a vineyard. That looked beautiful. Yeah, my friend Lucy yes directed that one and, and wrote it we've made a few movies together now we made love on harbor island um she mm-hmm. directed and wrote that one uh, with me and morgan cohen and um and yeah uh me and um uh becky uh, uh what's becky's last name in uh love on the vineyard oh, there's Olsen. so many movies Becky Olson, Rebecca yeah. Olson. I, I'm so sorry, Becky, if you see this. There's so many names all the time and people in movies. And, yeah, I'm um, sure she understands. Yeah, Becky Olson and I were in that one in August of 2020, actually. I, I rolled right off that one into the Sunflower Valley one with uh, with Aaron Cahill. And um, yeah, that one was some of the most beautiful locations I've, I've gotten the chance to work on. And with mm-hmm. wonderful people like Matt Hamilton, a buddy of mine is is in that one. And, yeah. And Becky, Becky Olson, mm-hmm. right. whose name I <laughs> always remember. One thing I noticed about your filmography is you've had a lot of female directors that you've gotten to work with, which I think yeah, is pretty cool. I guess, that, I guess that's true. I hadn't really been paying attention, but uh, it might be because of the, the genre. Uh, mm-hmm. I think uh, women are better suited to direct these personally, mm-hmm. generally speaking. Because uh, you have Heather in my... this new one. Yeah. Chris Will Wolf, Lucy. Chris Will Wolf, Lucy, and, Heather. Uh, yeah. So Jill, cool. Jill Carter is uh, directing the ones that I'm like in the middle of making right now. Um, yeah, lots of female directors. Because it's actually an, uh, not that commonly. I, I saw an interview with Harrison Ford. He's only made one movie in his whole career with a female director. And yeah, I think Catherine Harrison Ford's making. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, Catherine, I mean. Well, you, you did it with the best if you're, if you're getting to work with Catherine Bigelow. She's she's the best there is. So, um, yeah, I think Hair Support's making different movies that I'm making, so that might have something to do with it. Yeah, but, uh, but still, I think but, it's cool. And he, and, he, and he was also making movies in like the 70s and 80s when apparently <laughs> women didn't exist or something, uh, or so you, the entertainment industry would have you believe. Um you know, uh, I think I think a, a woman's eye is best for these films, to be mm-hmm. honest, because they're yeah for women by women yeah yeah well uh so you've done a couple lifetime thrillers i noticed and uh what are those like to make those kind of thrillers they are it's funny they're they're like the same shooting schedule as uh as the rom-coms uh at least the made for television version um and so it's like the same the same time the same shooting schedule more or less but completely different content obviously mm-hmm. and you know, from from one scene to the next you'll have to like be seducing somebody or or murdering somebody or uh you know there's it's just a it's a funny it's a funny thing i um personally i find that at this budget level it looks better in rom-com form um, to work under those sort of constraints. And so mm-hmm. I've sort of gotten away from the thrillers a little bit. Um, I don't yeah. know if I'll never not do another one again, but in the meantime, um, I'm pretty happy just doing the rom-coms mm-hmm. for the TV movie version of these. Yeah, cool. Um, I noticed you have one coming out on that you're supporting in with for Netflix, the My Fake Boyfriend. Yeah, that's actually coming out on uh, Amazon Prime. They just dropped a trailer oh, today. Yeah. Oh, they did? I didn't even see it. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. Um, Dylan Sprouse, Sarah Hyland. That looks fun. Yeah, that one, It was. that's a real treat to, to be a part of it. Um, 
it's very different, very different than the uh, the stuff the Hallmark fan base has, has come to know me for, mm-hmm. for sure. But I, I just love the ability to get to do both these kinds of, yeah. of things. And uh, and I hope the audience uh, joins me because, um, yeah, this movie was such a treat. It's a very LGBTQ uh, leaning uh, themed film and oh, cool. uh, is totally inclusive. And um, yeah, and it's a comedy. So I got to be mm-hmm. very over the top. And yeah, it was fun. That's cool. Do they have longer shooting for uh, schedules for a movie like that? Or is it still about the three weeks? Yeah, that one, that one had a larger budget than your, your typical uh, Hallmark film or, or MOW. And so I think we shot that one for like six weeks or something like that. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Good. All right. So you have Romance to the Rescue coming out uh, yes. on Hallmark Channel. And why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, Romance of the Rescue stars uh, the lovely Andrea Brooks and myself and Nathan Witt um, and Benjamin Charles Watson and and Lucy Guest uh, plays my sister in the film. Um, And so that's that's the cast that jumps out at me off the top of my head. And it's about um, it's about a a supermarket. manager played by lovely Andrea Brooks who lies to her boss and says that she has an agility trained super dog uh, when in fact she does not own a dog at all Um, and so (laughs) she quickly goes to the local animal shelter uh, run by yours truly um, and adopts a dog uh, and then realizes it's going to be a lot more difficult to train said dog into a super dog and so she comes back and enlists me once again to help her uh, in that pursuit and and um, love and hijinks ensue. <laughs> so it must have been an experience working with all these dogs. We we primarily just worked with the one dog. Her name was Nova. She was a border collie, and mm-hmm. uh, and she was unbelievable. Yeah, it's just a brilliant dog. Mm-hmm. That's so cute. Uh, do you have dogs yourself? I don't know. We travel so much and we're on so many planes all the time that I don't know the, the thought of taking it on different flights and stuff is, is a little too much yeah. uh, to, to, to think about. Um, but we live in a neighborhood in Toronto right now where there's just dogs everywhere. And so we're constantly <laughs> like window shopping everybody's dogs thinking all about right. what we want. And like, <laughs> so one day, I mean, we talk about it all the time, but we just haven't, haven't pulled the trigger. Mm-hmm. Well, was this your first time working with Andrea or did you work with her on When Calls the Heart? Did you have any scenes together? Yeah, we've actually worked together twice before this, oh, okay. um, or at least on the same projects. We did a, We both played supporting roles in a movie called The Harvest Wedding. Oh, right. Um, yeah. I forgot about and, that. Yeah. And so we, we, we get married in that film, actually. And there's a photo that sort of circulates online all the time of us. Uh, me and my my wedding suit and her and her wedding dress and I think people think that we're actually married sometimes <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so we, yeah we got married in that oh, one yeah. and then we worked on the second season of When Calls the Heart together um, yeah. we both came from Hamilton uh, and she stuck around and this guy uh, hit the road um, <laughs> but I, we were talking the other day we were trying to figure out if we actually had any crossover scenes and I don't think we did yeah I was trying to think if there uh, if there were any, but, uh, but uh, you at least interacted on set and things like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. We crossed paths. Cool. Um, yeah. And I saw the Nathan Whitty is in this and he's hilarious. Love him. Is that how you pronounce it? Nathan Whitty? I think so. I interviewed okay. him. I should know. <laughs> what I, <thought. laughs> I met him and I worked with him, but we didn't discuss his last name. So, um, <laughs> but he's great. I love him. Yeah. He's awesome. He's, he's awesome. Charming. Um, and he plays her boss right yeah yeah Yeah, he is the one that she is trying to impress cool so when did you film this one we filmed this like basically exactly a year ago i think it was uh yeah i think it was may of of 2021 so Mm. it was sort of uh cloudy spring in vancouver cool good well looking forward to it i think it's going to be fun little film We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? 
but you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks. Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies Podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. You've already done our fun questions uh, because you've, we, this is our third interview. So I decided to give you what are called the Prowse questions, which are done by, which were given by James Lipton. Since this, this is an actor's interview, why not? Right? It was, I like it. Uh, and so <laughs> here we go. First question, what is your favorite word? My favorite word is truth, I think. Mm. Good one. What is your least favorite word? Impossible, oh, maybe. That's good. You're very motivational. <laughs> that's good. Oh, geez. I hope not. <laughs> I, don't, I don't not want to be. I just said, uh, sure. <laughs> that's good. Okay. Uh, what turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? That makes you um, excited a struggle like um yeah i i really connect with um people who have been through struggle in life mm -hmm. stories about people who have been through struggle um and quiet struggle like that mm -hmm. you know that is like an everyday person's yeah. struggle and um and perseverance through that and just sort of the idea that that it never truly ends and it's often a part of life and there's beauty within that i guess those are things i connect with i saw your mother's day post and that was very sweet that's she sounds like an amazing lady i think a lot of what i said in response to what what inspires me and what i connect with has to do uh probably entirely with with the, the history with my mom and how young she had me and the struggle that we went through together and, and all that and mm -hmm. uh yeah she's always been my hero and yeah that's great. All right. What turns you off creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? What it, what it gets under your skin? Delusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Delusion. I hate when people um, have a sense of just inflated sense of themselves, whether it be th uh, some sort of pretentiousness or, or mm -hmm. even just delusional optimism sometimes is frustrating i just don't i like when people have a good grounded sense of the facts and, and can operate from there that makes sense okay what sound or noise do you love sound or noise do i love maybe um like whistling oh that's cute oh, i like that I like whistling. Good answer. I, I, do a, I do a lot of whistling when i'm alone and uh <laughs> yeah I'm, I, i've never been able to play a musical instrument or sing so i think it's like the closest thing i have to being able to feel musical <laughs> cute i like that so what sound or noise do you hate um i hate the sound of uh um fake laughter when somebody tells a a bad oh. joke and then everyone everyone's just trying to make them feel better i do it too i, oh, I yeah. don't have the heart to be a jerk and just not <laughs> but yeah I, I, you can it just fills a room with unease yeah. or like a laugh track on a sitcom yeah, yeah. i hate that i hate that it's <laughs> okay. funny because uh, i liked it when i was growing up i liked friends yeah. and all that stuff and i don't know the office ruined that for me mm. yeah so what profession other than your own would you like to attempt uh scuba diving instructor sports agent fireman um, fireman, fireman, however you would pronounce it, like a normal person. Um, <laughs> uh, those things, maybe stunt man would have been cool. Any professional athlete, I think would have been the first choice, but wasn't in the cards. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. You play, did you play football? Uh, or I played, I, I didn't really play football. I, well, I, I, 
I, w- I could have played football. I tried to, I would play on like the spring training and stuff. And whenever I was able to play with the football team, I would. But the thing is, where we come from, football runs at the same time as volleyball, which are two polar opposite sports. And I, yeah. I loved both of them. And all of my closest friends played volleyball. And so I just ended up playing volleyball because I couldn't, the, the coaches wouldn't allow me to play both. Um, even though the football coach was always like, you need to come play football. And I'd be like, well, it's cold outside and all my buddies are inside in the gym playing <laughs> volleyball. So I'm going to go do that. Um, that being said, I, I played uh, rugby in the spring because it was on a different, it was oh, happening at a different time. And so, yeah, I was the, I was actually the captain of the rugby team. And, oh, uh, yeah. I, I, cool. I really liked rugby. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. What profession would you not like to do? Um, so many, so many. I would not like to bartend um, ever again. I, I spent, uh, I think, four four years bartending um, before uh-huh. I was able to make a living as an actor. And I don't miss it. I grew pretty miserable with it. And uh, I think it's for some people, but it was not for me. Yeah. All right. Last question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know. Um, maybe like you fixed it. Like, I don't know there because of the family history. I just, I want to know that a shift was made in like the lineage of my family for future generations. And I feel like a lot of my life is sort of committed to, to that and Mm -hmm. hoping that, um, that, you know, my children and my children's children and so on and so forth won't have to experience some of the stuff that me and my mom did. That's great. Well, you did it. You answered all the questions. (laughs) (laughs) You can now you say that you've gotten the Proust, the Proust questions, Uh, the questionnaire is very exciting. (laughs) But uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. We're excited about the new movie and uh, it's always good to catch up. We appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. So you have social media you'd like to share? Yeah. Um, at uh, Marcus underscore Rosner on Instagram. I really hope I got that right. I don't feel totally confident with that, but you'll find me, I'm sure. Or we'll you'll put find, it on the, the You'll find one of 30 fake accounts, I'm sure. And uh, it's not one of those. Um <laughs> And then on Twitter at the Marcus Rosner. Um, I think that's all I got, just the two. So, yeah. Good. All right. Well, thanks so much. And uh, we'll try to not make it two more years before we talk to you again. Yeah, sounds good. (laughs) Thanks for chatting. Bye. We'd like to thank Marcus for coming on the podcast. It was really fun to get to talk with him. Let us know what you think about all the things that we talked about. And uh, please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. If you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group and merch store. Check out that. And uh, we're always grateful for all the house stores when they come by. So thanks again to Marcus. And uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone.